You know guys, sometimes I want to take a look at something that doesn't fall within the realm of shit I might be able to review. Things that I have opinions on, but that I either don't have a good enough reason to, or just don't feel like spending the time to present the bare minimum of fairness that I try to present in the Lost Review, which I also try to tailor more toward indie games, the kind of games that fall through the cracks. And thus, do we have Eyes On, where I'll just take a look at stuff in general, not even necessarily games. Fairness out the window, just my general opinion about the thing as I find it, with admittedly little to no research. In this case, I want to take a look at Dead Cells. Now, this is a early access game that's been marketed as a, a roguelike metroidvania game, which it's kind of a good news, bad news joke for me at that case when I first heard about it, but even worse, it's early access. Early access is typically a big no-go for me. I will wait until it comes out, unless I get a review copy or something, which I didn't get in this case. What I did get is injured shoulder blades and shoulder joints because I am just incredibly unhealthy and managed to be injured by a very bad ergonomic chair, a chair not designed for someone with my kind of gangly insectoid body. Not good. An insect orangutan is the best description I've ever heard of me. A pale, hairless, insectoid orangutan. And you know, I'd also picked up Hollow Knight. These are the kind of games that I find work best when I'm using my Steam controller. And honestly, Hollow Knight bored the piss out of my stream chat, to the point where one of my viewers went ahead and vetoed it with one of the commands that I have people able to use, kind of forcing me at that point to move on to Dead Cells. And oh my, I gotta say, I'm, I'm very grateful to that particular stream viewer, a shout out to my boy Ahab for getting me into Dead Cells as early as I possibly could. This is what early access should look like. The game itself is already polished. It's got like 10 to 20 hours already in it, two big bosses. Now, I'm not even good at these Metroidvania style games as a general rule. I didn't even like Metroid. Metroid didn't really speak to me back in the day. I really did enjoy Castlevania Symphony of the Night and managed to get through it. But really, other than Dark Souls, which most people jokingly and not entirely jokingly refer to as 3D Metroidvania, I don't get into those style of games. Though I would note, it's not, it's not a real roguelike. And I, I gotta, I gotta point that out. I gotta point that out. So many people are calling their games roguelike, and yet they add anything persistent into the game. Roguelike means when you die, game is over. Nothing left. You start over, motherfucker. In Dead Cells, death does mean that you lose all the items and power-ups that you manage to gather and you lose the progress to the dungeon that you've made thus far. But throughout the game, you unlock persistent upgrades. Upgrades which do help make each consecutive run a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And while I have no problem with that, it's actually a good evolution for the genre to spread it to more people and allow your game to be more accessible by more players. It's not fucking roguelike. It is rogue light at best. Why, why do devs shy away from accepting that title so much? Why do they all think that they can draw in the ultra hardcore crowd and make them focus on their game while adding things that will objectively alienate the exact people they're hoping to trick into their game? Don't do it. Accept it. Embrace your genre. Now, of course, there is a bit of accidental balance when it comes to these persistent upgrades and unlocks that you get access to, mostly because, like, half of the things you can unlock are basically fucking useless. They're underpowered or so situational that you wouldn't bother when the point is that the dungeons can alter and change. You need to be able to stay on your toes if you actually want to be able to survive. Really situational moves are just for challenge runs, basically. Thankfully, from what I hear, the dev is actually working on a lot of those, the most widely accepted and acknowledged underpowered or overpowered parts of the game, and they are tuning them and tweaking them. I see a lot of comparisons to Dark Souls, but I'll be honest guys, as someone who seems to compare way too many games to that franchise, I'm not really seeing it this time. Other than the very basic roll and dodge function which doesn't include iframes, it's not really very much like Dark Souls. Even the tone of it is dissimilar, while artistically there is 
clearly some similarities to the stylistic approach for the overall design of each area of the dungeon or castle or whatever the hell they call it. What little lore-based stuff you see at the beginning kind of has a vein of humor to it that Dark Souls is mostly missing. Which, again, not a bad thing, given the, the style they've chosen to go with, this 2D Metroidvania style thing. What's really disappointing is that there's very, very little to this lore. You can't really find out much, nor is there really that much you can find out spread silently throughout the dungeons to tell you more of the story, the way a Souls game often will let you using item descriptions, that sort of thing. But once again, I do hear the devs have every intention of adding more actual lore and story elements to this game, as well as more bosses. So the game is only going to improve from a point where I think it's already a great, enjoyable, frankly addicting game. This thing is basically a masochistic addiction engine for those of us who do like that smash your head into a brick wall until we finally bust our way through mentality of playing these kind of action, combat, soulsy, metroidvania, castlevania, whatever ania games. While I definitely don't see this game appealing to the average person who doesn't already have an inclination towards these kind of games, I found that this one scratched an itch that so many games have been trying and failing to scratch since the massive success of Dark Souls. Without really encroaching or interfering with the territory that Souls-like games actually fills, early access games still seem like a cesspool of terrible terrible ideas with even worse execution, and I've been betrayed far too many times in the past to get over that particular bias against them. But for once, this game is well worth the price even though it's still in early access. I would really honestly suggest you at least keep an eye on this one. It is a lot of fun, and only stands to get better as they continue to tighten up the controls, polish what's already there, and add new content. What isn't there to love?